This video is a continuation of a previous video that showed how to find the influence lines for the moment and shear at a certain point in a beam uh, using the general method where we first have to find the reaction influence lines for each reaction point. Then we use those reactions in order to find the moment and the shear. Uh, now I'm going to do the same example as in the previous video, but this time I'm going to use a different method which uses the muller breslau principle to draw qualitative influence lines. Uh, so we can basically find out the shape of the influence line almost immediately and then all we have to do is find one point on that influence line using equilibrium and from that one point and using similar triangles we can find the uh, influence diagram uh, ordinates for every single other point in the beam. So here is the situation that we looked at previously. It's a multi-span beam uh, with a hinge and we want to find the influence lines for the shear and the moment at point E, which is some point on the beam which is halfway located between points D and G. So instead of having to find the reaction influence lines first, using the muller breslau principle, we can actually go straight to find the shear and the moment uh, at, at that given point. So let's find the shear at point E. So how do we do this? In order to do this, we have to break the beam in shear only at point E, and then we displace the broken ends of that beam in the positive direction. So if this is our beam again, what we do is we make a shear cut here at E, we break it, then we're gonna move uh, the right side of E up and the left side of E down. And this is tantamount to a positive shearing because uh, with our um, sign conventions, uh, shear uh, up on the left of a section is positive and shear down on the right of a section is also positive. So this is a positive shear. So we can draw our influence diagram directly for the shear at point E, and this is kilonewtons per kilonewton, although we're not going to put any units on it right now. So if I draw a horizontal line here, okay, and we have A, B, C, D, E, and G. D, E, and G. So E is where we do our split. So we're going to move uh, this side up and the other side down. So we're going to go up, up here, and down here. Now I'm going to draw in our reaction points as well. Okay, so we have a reaction here, reaction here. C is a hinge, which is important, and G is a pin. Okay, so if we move if we cut this and we move this side up, then we're basically going to have this side displace upwards like this. Okay, that's pretty clear. And this side is going to displace downwards. Um, now all we have to do after we make this split is to draw the rest of the system. Um, now we're actually drawing the, the real beams and hinges and everything in the displaced shape that they would uh, go to if we were to make this split and displacement. So here we have to pull down. So we still have to go through the reaction at D and at C we have a hinge. So that means we can have a change in direction and this has to go through now point B and it ends up displaced like this. So here's the displaced shape of that structure after we cut it and then if we fill this in like this then this represents our influence diagram. So you can see, so we've displaced EG up, okay, so this kind of rotates around a hinge at G, and we've displaced the left side of E down, and so this is the shape that that structure would make. Now these are always going to be straight lines because uh, for a determinant system, because once we remove some restraint, one restraint in a determinant system, then we have an unstable system. So this acts as a mechanism, so there should always be some way to draw this displaced shape using straight lines for the beams. 
uh, for the remaining beams. So these beams can't bend because they can't take any load because it's an unstable system. So we have the shape, but what are the actual values here? You know, we can find approximately what these is. We could actually calculate these based on geometry um, because we know that uh, the right side of E and the left side of E, these two lines have to be parallel. So we could actually calculate this from geometry. But actually, a probably more straightforward way is to just use equilibrium to find the actually one point on this influence diagram. Okay, so we need to find the shear at E due to a unit load at E. Okay, so if we want to find this point here, then all we have to do is put the point load, uh, so the influence diagram is representing the effect of a moving unit load on a uh, response parameter at a point. In this case, it's the shear at E. So if we want to find this point, it's what is the shear at E caused by a unit load at E. Okay, so now since we're talking about shear here, you know, at E, we actually have two different values. We have this one up here and we have this one down here. And the one at the top represents the shear at E when the unit load is an infinitesimally small distance to the right of E. And uh, the bottom one here represents the shear at E due to a unit load located an infinitesimally small distance to the left of E. So just like in the previous example where we were looking at two cases, uh, where we're looking at the right of E and the left of E, we have the same kind of situation here. But we can do basically everything uh, in one step. So we need to check. So we have to check uh, using a unit load just to the left and just to the right of E. So I'm generally going to look at a free body diagram of this section EG since it's quite small and so I won't have a lot of loads involved and it'll be easier to solve. Uh, we could select the left side as well, but it would take a little bit longer to solve. But in order to do that, I have to know what this reaction is at G. Um, now this is a little bit different than before. So before we had to find the full influence diagram for the reaction at G. In this case, I only have to find the reaction at G due to a single unit load at point E. So it's uh, quite a bit simpler. So find GY first. Okay, so in order to do that, I actually have to look at member AC. So I start with member AC. Uh, since this beam has a hinge, uh, you know, we have to look at it in two halves uh, in order to find the reaction. So member AC looks like this. This is BY. There's no other external loads on here. So if we do a sum of MC, right, we're going to find that BY is equal to 0. And then we do sum FY, then we're going to find that CY is also equal to 0. And CX is equal to 0 from sum of force direction. CX is equal to 0 due to sum of forces in the X direction. I think that part might have been cut off a little bit. So then to find GY, now I can look at, now that I know the force in the hinge, I can look at member CG and uh, do the same kind of situation. We have CY, which we know is equal to zero. We have DY, we have E, we have a single point load at point E, and we have GY and GX. And so this point load now is not moving. It is actually located at E, which is the situation that we're trying to find. So if I do sum of MD, we find that GY is equal to 0.5 kilonewtons uh, in the upwards direction. Okay, so that's easy. So now we can just do an FBD for EG, which as I said was the cut uh, part of the beam to the right of E. And then I'm going to look. I'm going to look at two cases: one where the unit load is just to the left of E, and one where the unit load is just to the right of E, and solve the same free body diagram twice. So first is unit load 
just to the left of E. Okay, so our free body diagram looks like this. This is 0 0.5, which is GY. And then we have our forces at the cut. Okay, we have ME and VE. And these are positive, right, as we discussed in the uh, previous influence diagram video. So shear up on the left and moment clockwise on the left are both positive with respect to the effect on the beam itself. So this is E and this is G. Now since the unit load is just to the left of E, then it's not going to show up on this free body diagram because the free body diagram is cut at E. So therefore I use equilibrium. And from the simple equilibrium I find that VE is negative 0.5, so it's actually opposite of the direction I've drawn it. And since the direction I've drawn it is positive, then this is negative shear. And I found the moment as well at the cut, which is equal to 1.0 kilonewton meters. Uh, in the same direction as I've drawn it, which is positive. So then I look at the unit load just to the right of E, which means that now it's going to actually be included on the free body diagram of EG. So this is identical, except it has a unit load here, just at point E. Okay, so now if I do my uh, equilibrium uh, for Fy equals 0, then I get VE is now 0 0.5 up instead of 0 0.5 down. So we see that depending on this location of the unit load, the shear at location E uh, changes sign basically from negative to positive. It could also change magnitude depending on the situation. This situation has to, happens to be symmetric, so the magnitude is still 0 0.5, but that, that's not always the case. Um, ME, uh, which is the moment at E, remains unchanged because we're just applying a unit load at E, which doesn't affect the moment. So now we can go back and draw our shear influence diagram. So here's the influence diagram that we built before using the qualitative Mueller-Breslau method. Uh, now we know some of these values, so we know that if the unit load is just to the left of E, then our shear is negative 0 0.5, so that's this side, just to the left of E, negative 0 0.5, and just to the right of E we found that it's positive 0 0.5 so let's get rid of this arrow and this is sorry my one note crashed there for a second so this was negative 0 0.5 and this was positive 0 0.5 okay and then so since we know these points now and we know that these are straight lines then we can find using similar triangles that this is 0 0.5 okay because this distance is the same as this distance and the slope is identical, so this is positive 0 0.5. And this one here is negative 0 0.25. Okay, so we know the slope here, we know the height, right? We know this distance, we know that this angle, this angle is the same as this angle, right? Just to review similar triangles. Therefore, we can find point negative 0 0.25 very easily, right? Just using similar triangles and the fact that this width, this distance is half of this distance. Therefore, this height is half of this height. Right? So this is similar triangles. Okay. And this one as well, similar triangles. Okay. And these ones are from above. So you can see that this method is quite powerful because we've actually saved ourselves a lot of work just by drawing the shape of this. Um, based on the deflected shape of the system after we've made the cut, the shear cut here. And now if we want to draw the moment, <coughs> then we have to actually, instead of making a shear cut, now we're going to make what's effectively a moment cut, which means that we add a hinge to the beam at the location that we want to find uh, the influence diagram for. So in this case, it's E. So we're going to add a hinge in the beam at location E. And instead of applying a shear displacement, now we're going to apply a rotation at that location. And that's how we're going to find the shape of that influence diagram. So remember, for VE, uh, we made a shear cut. Then we made a displacement. So now for the moment, instead of the shear, we're going to make a moment cut, which is a hinge. 
and apply the rot and apply rotation. So let's redraw the. Okay, so here's our beam again with our existing hinge at C. So now we want to find the moment at location E, and this is location E. So I'm going to add a hinge. Okay, and then I'm going to apply a rotation that is in the positive sense which looks like this. So remember positive moment and positive rotation. So it's clockwise on the left side on the left side of a member and counterclockwise on the right side of a member. So we're going to have to add a hinge. And apply rotation. So we can see if we want to bend these up. We want to bend these up. That means that this point is actually going to raise Okay, and again, now that we've added a release, our formerly determinate structure is now a mechanism. So all of the members are going to stay straight. So we have to then figure out what this shape is going to look like. So here's our structure and here's our hinge. We're going to rotate this up, which means that we're going to actually end up rotating this member EG. Okay, so this is going to rotate up like this. Okay, and then at the hinge we have a break. Okay, so this left part, the E, is also going to rotate like this. And now it's got to still sit on this uh, roller here. So it's got to go through there until it gets to the other hinge. And then it's going to deform like this. It has to sit on the roller B, and that's it. So this is our deflected shape of the system after we've applied that rotation, right? And this is the actual rotation theta here, okay, that we've applied at point E. Okay, and then uh, the shape of our influence diagram is just the area underneath this deflected shape, okay, for this uh, newly formed mechanism. And now in order to find, we just need to find one of these points to find all of them because of similar triangles. And we've already previously found the moment, okay, the moment at point E due to a unit load at point E is 1.0 kilonewton per kilonewton meters, which is positive, which is up here. So let's put that moment in. So this is 1.0. Okay, so we know that point. We know that this is zero down here. We know it's zero at D. We know it's zero at B. And using similar triangles, I can find that this is negative 1.0 and that this is 0 0.5, okay? So the distance here between C and D is the same as C and E. So the height of those triangles has to be the same because the slope is identical. And here this distance is twice as much as this distance. So this triangle is half as tall as this one. So this is similar triangles. And same out here, similar triangles. Okay, so here what we did was need to find moment at E due to a unit load at E. Okay, and we already did it. We already did so when finding the shear. So ME is equal to 1.0 kilonewton meters. And so this is our influence diagram for ME. And the units are kilonewton meters per kilonewton. So per kilonewton of applied force at any point uh, on this influence diagram, we're going to get whatever the height of this influence diagram is in kilonewton meters of moment at point E. And so if you look back, these are the exact same influence diagrams that we got for a moment and shear using the previous method um, where we had to calculate the reactions first. So you can see that this is quite a bit easier if you can stand uh, drawing these displaced shapes. And that's how you draw influence diagrams for a shear and moment using the Mueller-Bresla principle.